Hey everyone, this is Greg here and welcome to the Just A Meme podcast where we chat to teams using blockchain technology to solve real world problems. Today we have Andrew from NFT Master where they're building the first XRPL native NFT marketplace. Hey Andrew, good to make time, uh, great to meet you. Um, great to meet you as well, Greg. I think we've been trying to do this for a while, uh, yeah. but yeah, I think originally when you first reached out to us, we just received the grant and uh, we are like, Let's let's wait a bit until we have an actual product out. Um, I know in the space there's like a few people that like to talk the talk, uh, but walking the walk and building a product is you know a whole different ball game. So uh, it's great to finally uh, be with you here. Yeah, that COVID, everything else. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Then suspects. we came back from Apex. <laughs> Unfortunately, I got COVID, and then yeah, then we had to delay it a bit more. But we're here now. <laughs> no, cool. Uh, so before we get into like NFT master. Let's go back a bit. What brought you into the space? Like, what what was your journey through into crypto, sort of thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, I sort of discovered crypto when I was fairly young, uh, but it was around 2016, 2017 area. Uh, so got into like the big ones here in Australia. It started to come uh, come into Australia. So that's when I first discovered it. But when NFT Master first started, I guess yeah, sort of how it started, how it all came to be, was that. I was working as a software engineer, as a project manager for a uh, membership platform that built uh, some of the software for um, some of Australia's biggest sporting clubs. And whilst we were talking to one of these clubs, they asked uh, if we had digital uh, tickets, which was something that was pretty standard at the time. Uh, But it was just because of COVID, they weren't able to have the actual physical tickets. You needed the digital ticket to enter the stadium and stuff like that. So... um, I sort of asked, like, and they sort of explained that that was the case. And it was at the same time where I was going down the rabbit hole of NFTs. And I sort of put two and two together. Yeah, put two together and then realized that, you know, we could probably, like, use these NFTs over here uh, for this use case. And now, ultimately, we didn't end up going down that route and uh, ended up leaving to, like, explore the blockchain space a lot more. Um, But at the beginning, we were looking for a solution that, had NFTs or was going down the NFT route uh, with the blockchain, but we couldn't have something that had like transaction fees that cost more than the tickets themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why we were sort of exploring the space. Uh, XRPL had the grants program or Ripple had the grants program and we applied for it. And yeah, but what we then discovered was that we started building out um, all the NFT stuff. And um, and then we realized there was little tools and sort of functionality at the time because they had literally just released the XLS20 uh, documentation and amendment, I guess. Um, and so, yeah, then we started developing straight away. And uh, here we are. We released the XLS20 marketplace on the DevNet at the moment, open for the public to use. And uh, we've received like heaps of good feedback from that. And yeah, we, that's sort of how we all started, how it all came to be. Yeah, so... sort of on your journey did you come across like ethereum first and that you were looking at some of like the nft solutions on there because i guess that must well 2016 2017 2017 was crypto kitties wasn't it and that's when it all sort of kicked off um yeah i don't know if anyone was sort of preaching the the gospel i know uh uh what's the guy's name gary v is quite big on you know any ticket's going to become an nft in the future sort of thing and i wholly subscribe to that i think it's an excellent sort of connection tool uh marketing tool however you want to call it but um when did you sort of yeah, make the connection between the two almost <laughs> yeah no that was it was probably a bit later on it wasn't more so 2018 it was more around when covid sort of uh had started and sort of tapered off a bit just because then when covid first hit in australia uh which is where we're based um is they sort of like shut everything down like yeah they, yeah no, no, it's right? quite uh, uh, yeah, harsh exactly. <laughs> lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> like we had like probably the harshest lockdown, right? And then so when things started to slowly back uh, open back up, that's sort of when uh, we went down the route us. of that. And then mm-hmm. obviously I ended up leaving and then starting uh, NFT Master. But yeah, that's sort of when it started. Um, but yeah, ultimately we didn't end up going down the ticketing route. Um, just we found that there was a lot of space for development in NFTs just in general. So yeah. we didn't want to say, all right, let's just develop this for like large sporting clubs. Let's develop this for everyone. Uh, so everyone could use, develop, mint. And um, yeah. Yeah, it is interesting because um, the companies that I work with, you 
you are you can you can go niche but at some point there needs to be like a layer first before people go niche um yeah. it sort of goes through a cycle of um sort of bundling stuff up into platforms and then someone picks off each part and then unbundles it and then it all gets bundled back up into a new platform and that sort of <laughs> cycle continues um so i mean for the yeah I, we you sort of touched on it earlier for xrp uh, that was sort of our view we we sort of started out thinking okay we're going to do this very specific thing but then actually became actually that's cater to the masses and uh you know give everyone sort of equal access first establish the tools uh, build out APIs, all that sort of stuff, and then go, you know, go back and look at use cases and maybe go, go more niche and split it out sort of thing. Um, yeah, no, that's exactly <laughs> the case. And the other thing like you sort of need to consider is like, especially like for sporting clubs, we got to sort of speak to a lot of the people at sort of the higher levels in the sporting clubs as well. Mm. And a lot of them have, um, they, they're not too fond of the uh, NFT space at the moment. They don't really understand it as much and what it could really be used for. Yeah. So I guess then you have the, all right, say you do have the tools, which you have all the tools and features already built out, which we didn't at the time. It was then going to them and saying, all right, now educating them about what NFTs are. And they're like, oh, we don't know. Or So you have that extra barrier of one, building the tools, then educating the audience and then actually implementing a sort of layer or, or a sort of first solution before you really get into like the deeper stuff. Like yeah. ticketing would take like a massive time, right? You need so much infrastructure before. So it'd be like, if you were to go down that rabbit hole or go down there, it'd be like, all right, let's do something like collectibles first. The people get comfortable, people understand how to use them. And then you sort of go step by step until you get to like the core premise of what you originally wanted to build, right? And yeah. it's like, you know, but yeah, I think even one of the biggest things is like educating people on the use cases, especially, you know, they have these large companies that want to uh, damage their brand and, and their customers and stuff like that. So yeah, there's a whole whole space in there. But I think uh, the biggest like next level mover for like education wise is like these large social media platforms integrating uh nfts into them so obviously yeah. we've seen Twitter already meta's uh on the way there so yeah yeah i, I mean that cool. that is 100 percent our view you have like this push and pull dynamic going on you have the pool of the big brands I, I was looking at some of the stats uh from ethereum like nike last year i think it made like 91 million in royalties from their rtfk thing um like that's huge no everyone in marketing is definitely looking at that and going okay how can we replicate that obviously there's about you know 10 others that maybe didn't do so well but you're still talking about hundreds of thousands of do uh, dollars for like a first outing so it's like okay that's definitely going to happen so you're gonna have all these ip things come in onto the blockchain so that's your pool you know pulling people in marvel stuff like that and then you've got this big yeah. push from uh big platform social media you know you're talking billions of users these nfts are going to be in front of people someone's going to double click on a twitter profile see the little hexagon thing and think what what is that and that's probably you know if bitcoin was the first level of marketing for crypto i think we're just about to reach like a second one which reaches a lot more people where it's nft sort of centric so yeah i mean we're yeah. really excited about this moment in time because we think it's it's just about yeah. to kick off in a big way <laughs> and and for the big brands, I think it's more so like like you mentioned, a marketing play, right? Meaning that, yeah. all right, well, the uh, wallets are going to be linked to social profiles. Someone clicks on your wallet and then they see your, you know, your Starbucks NFT within your wallet. And so yeah. like that would probably be the biggest marketing play. So yeah, that's, I think, how they would leverage that. And then obviously then they could bring like massive utility. They already have the infrastructure. Uh, you know, whether that be in the form of a loyalty program and stuff like that. So, yeah. I did it's say no a... hard questions, but I, I always uh, try and think through, like, what what are you, when you have these conversations and educate people, maybe it's a bit early for that, but, you know, like, what is the advantage of having an NFT Starbucks thing versus, uh, you know, an app that you download and it's Starbucks sort of thing and maybe you get a badge for it that you can put on your profile i don't know like i suppose what i guess in that case it's probably more a social element um yeah but like for tickets, yeah, like what's what's the advantage of having a ticket in an nft not a 
Did you yeah, I mean, the, the main, I, I guess the main thing is like, all right, you don't know how you want to use this in the future, right? And it's mm. like, so essentially having that as an NFT is future-proofing whatever you're doing. So once we go down this, all right, say at the moment, it doesn't provide much utility, but you're having it for the sake of, even if it's just a marketing campaign at the beginning, right? Mm. Let's say it's that. So, all right, you have a marketing campaign for it at the beginning. And then what happens is that, all right, Facebook decides to move more into the metaverse. And then you're able to reward those early customers that you had that really moved and pivoted towards this extra sort of stream or uh, went down this down this route. And then so it's not, all right, you might look at it now and say, all right, what's the difference between a, uh, an iPhone app that isn't an NFT or it doesn't have an NFT as a loyalty program compared mm-hmm. to one that is? And I think the main thing is the future-proofing it in the sense that, all right, 10 years from now, you can see exactly when that NFT was minted and come back to it and say, all right, these customers get X, Y, Z. So I think in that sense, yeah, like, but there is a lot of space that needs to go. And the other thing is, like we mentioned, right, you're trying to educate not only the people of the company, but also uh, the audience, right, or the the users, I guess. Um, You know, it's it's fairly technical, you know, setting up a wallet. I mean, from a developer point of view, it's not technical at all, right? But from a general user perspective that isn't as tight knit with, like the crypto world uh, might find it difficult to set up, a, uh, you know, a wallet. Then having to go to an exchange, go through a KYC process, yeah. fund that wallet, and then having to purchase it. Now there is solutions where you could, you know, have a credit card and purchase the NFT from a credit card and stuff like that. But even then, there's a, a barrier that needs, you know, educating the user still. So I think, yeah, just going back to your point, um, maybe not now. There might not be as much utility. But it's an indefinite thing where you could provide utility down the road. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting because I, I I sort of think of it as uh, sort of going back to bundling. It sort of like bundles up your communication channel, so you don't need to sign up to like an email list and a rewards app. It's all part of the same thing almost. I mean, yes, you probably still have like a little inbox uh, tied to your wallet running. I don't know XMT, XTMP, the chat protocol, and stuff like that, but it is that sort of direct connection and you're not relying on MailChimp or something else, um, stuff like that to de- to deliver it, saying that there'll probably be services and stuff that do it. Um, yeah. so be it is it sort of like in, NFTs might have unbundled it and then we're going to see the rebundling of it around uh, NFT centric things. I think, yeah, it's just interesting how technology evolves and sort of comes in waves. And the one that if sort of in the long run, I think, like you say, if, it proves out that it is that long-term connection and people, you know, look at your NFT profile and go, oh, actually he's gone to Apex. He's gone to uh, Ubri. He's like one of the sort of uh, OGs of the space. That is sort of social proof um, in a in a really real form um, yeah. sort of thing and verified, like you can't make it up. I've been playing around mm. a lot with the AI image generators and it's scary, like what kind of stuff you could do nowadays. So, yeah. yeah. I think the other like pro is like, I think you sort of touched on as well is that users don't have to uh, you don't have to go through as much of a traditional signing process now you could just sign in with your wallet and I think when people get sort of used to that they'll find it a lot more easier and so that there's a pro there for the user side right like ease of use and stuff like that once it's already set up Um, but I think from like a customer or the I mean I guess from the business point of view you're also a lot closer to the funds as well, meaning that, all right, instead of having to now, they've created this account, they've gone through like, you know, this long form, and then they want to actually make a purchasing decision and then they have to put in their credit card details. Like as yeah. opposed to that, and you're already close, you already got the wallet ID, you could just send a push for some, for the example. Yeah, that's push, true. Yeah, put a push notification directly to the wallet. So there's pros for the user being, you know, there's not... A massive sign-in process that's needed and also then putting in your payment details and then from the business point of view uh, you don't you're closer to the funds and, and there's less friction for the user as well yeah so, yeah but yeah I, yeah i think it's interesting and like sort of expanding that you know you can imagine these scenarios where these nfts you know maybe it has some sort of dynamic function where it turns gold, like if a certain event happens and stuff like that, and then becomes more valuable. And if you ever want to sell off your Starbucks points, because 
say Starbucks exits the UK or whatever, <laughs> you can sell it <laughs> sort of thing. Like, and some, you know, there is value there. So yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting thing. I, I sometimes, it will be interesting whether it goes a bit too dystopian or a bit more utopian almost where like everything's financialized on one thing or it unlocks all this sort of untapped value on the other. So coming back to the NFT master, what, what are you guys building at the moment? So you're building this sort of um, minting platform, as I understand it, is probably the m- major thing. And yeah. you're working with projects already and seeing what they produce. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've, like I mentioned, we've developed a uh, XLS20 marketplace, which is the NFTs for XRP on the DevNet, uh, open for the public to use. And it's at www.nftmaster.com. And uh, essentially, you can sign in with a dev, DevNet wallet, uh, mint an NFT, mint a whole collection, uh, play around with it. Uh, so it's mint, buy, sell, uh, burn, obviously, as well. And then we have a whole uh, sort of host of other features like IOU exchanges or IOU conversions to XLS20, um, bulk minting applications and stuff like that. So we initially started um, with the uh, buy, mint, sell, and burn, I guess. Yeah, and um, and we take away a lot of like the pain in the process of minting NFTs, right? So initially, we had it so that it's essentially a form, uh, like you might see on OpenSea, where you put in all the attributes or all the information, and then you could essentially press mint. So you're not messing around with creating the correct metadata, pinning your files to IPFS, stuff like that. So it automatically uh, uploads it to IPFS, or you using something? Yeah, else. yeah, that's okay. right. So yeah, there's, and that's a good point that you bring up. There's a distinguishing, or there's a bit of a uh, difference between some minting platforms, right? So some minting platforms might just be like, all right, just give us your URI. In that case, it's like fairly easy for the minting side, right? Because you're yeah. using it, it's pretty much free as well, right? But the main pain of it is like, all right, creating the correct metadata standard or metadata file, then pinning that to IPFS and then getting all your assets which might be your images, videos, stuff like that, mm. and then pin that to IPFS as well. So what we do is that we make that whole process a lot easier. So you don't need to worry about um, IPFS and what decentralized storage is and stuff like that. Yeah. And uh, you could just go straight from there. And I think that's like a massive like stepping stone for creators, right? Like these non-technical creators might not want to learn um, what you know decentralized storage is and stuff like that. So we've taken out the whole pain and uh, sort of process to that. Um, and then what we realized was that because that minting process initially was you're signing one by one using the SAR map. Yes. And so we we sort of gave it to people in the community to use and they're like, oh, wow, this is really easy to use. But what they came back to us and said is like, all right, so like if I have to create a 10,000, 10, yeah, I'll just sit there going. <laughs> yeah. And my firstly, just like typing all the information in to yeah. just like form a thousand times and then like minting it like, you know, a thousand, 10,000 times. And so we're well, like, yeah, all right. Well, obviously that's like a massive issue um, for like collection, even in the, even in the hundreds, right? Like yeah, yeah. exclude like the tens of thousands, right? Um, even in the hundreds, it's a massive process. And uh, so what we sort of did was that, all right, we created this bulk minting uh, application that works with it as well, which essentially what happens is that you go to NFT master, uh, you might, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of the time, these NFTs are image generated art, meaning that they'll create a couple of layers on an image generator. And yes. then that image generator will like generate, say, a uh, thousand images with the metadata already attached to it, right? Yep. And so what yep. we do is that that metadata that's already attached might not be in the correct XLS 24D standard that is common with NFTs on the XRP ledger. So what we do is that we have it like really easy where they could upload their 1,000 images, one, their 1,000 metadata as well, or 1,000 files of their metadata. And we automatically pair the images with the metadata and convert the metadata to XLS 24D, which is the correct thing. Okay, standard, interesting, yeah. Right? Pin all those files to IPFS, right? And so once you've pinned them all to IPFS, that's good and great, but like people still don't want to sign a thousand times or 10,000 times with their, with their uh, some wallet, right? So we thought that the best solution to that would be, all right, have a desktop application, open source application where people could see what's happening behind the scenes. 
And essentially what the desktop application does is that you put your batch number in and the desktop application will fetch that batch that we've already stored in decentralized storage and uh, go through and mint it using your XRP and your secrecy. Now, since it's on your desktop, it's an open source application. You can see what's happening behind it. So it's like less, I guess, uh, stressful. You don't know what, what we're doing with your secret key and stuff like that. Now, in the same token, this desktop application is open source, so you can change it how you want it. If you think something's unsafe about it, you could, you know, change it yeah, and sign yeah. your transactions by yourself. The other thing is like, all right, there might be some developers that don't want to use this desktop application at all, which is completely fine. So we've created like a public or open API that they could essentially pull the batch from and then they could sign their transactions one by one. Yep. So that's how we sort of went through this whole process. And then we use that same methodology for uh, IOU uh, conversions to XRP yeah. 20 and stuff like that. And so like those are some of the things that we've already built out. Um, we've already released videos about how it operates on our on our YouTube channel as well. Yep. So yeah, those are some of the things we've built out so far. So yeah. No, that's cool. So do you think there's um sort of scope in the future to do like I sort of go back to the AI image generator and I was just thinking like I guess for you know if someone doesn't have a thousand files I guess there's I guess there's applications that produce those thousand files right an image and a thing so you just go to that you produce what you want you haven't built that in yet so it's not like I type I give you 25 attributes and then choose a distribution and then you generate it sort of thing yeah yeah so we actually it's in the process of the pipeline we're actually pretty much we're close to having it done um, but okay cool is, yeah yeah so we have two options or we will have two options at the moment we only have one uh, but there's image based um collection which essentially is the process of you know going to an image generator and and selecting all like going through that process and then just uploading the images to us with the metadata yeah. and uh and then there's but the problem with that is that we'll um we'll manually like speak to the, uh, the projects and see what image generator they've used so we have like a lot of the main right, yeah ones yeah 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 <laughs> <clears throat> yeah we have a lot of the major ones at the moment but like there might be slight differences to the metadata standard that might be a problem when importing it right so what we have done is that all right we'll have like a uh, we'll support a lot of the major ones but then again uh we'll have this built in without within that application so they could just upload their layers uh they select the rarity will automatically generate the images pin it to ipfs nice and and they could do everything through that so what we like discovered early on was that the greatest points of friction is the integration between systems meaning that all right you have this image generator but now you want to have it in you know xls 24d standard yeah and so what happens is that pretty much everyone so far has like gone to a gone to a developer to write a script that like automatically pulls this and sort of does this and does that. But, you know, we've sort of decided to do all that in-house and sort of try to build like a, uh, I guess, enterprise level solution or like a, you know, a suitable product that's actually, you know, usable uh, on a wider scale, not just a one by one sort of collection. Standard. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that, <laughs> that sort of brings us on to like, I guess, what where do you see it going is probably the big question like are you trying to emulate something in ethereum or is it like very xrp specific that you're thinking with like the built-in royalties and stuff like that yeah um we're, we're probably going to stick to xrp for a while um yeah i think going after ethereum or going after nfts on ethereum is uh beating a dead horse um <laughs> like there's there's so many like other platforms that are already established yeah. and, you know, have ironed out all the kinks that go in when building a NFT marketplace. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we, yeah, we're looking at XRP, and then we're looking at um, sort of other things involving NFTs and other parts of um, you know the XRP ledger, which is like so many, right? So yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah, I think I think it's useful to look at the guys on Ethereum and that to get inspiration for the sort of like. What not to do maybe <laughs> um, in some yeah. sort of, and some some features like work really well um and it's always good to keep an eye on those guys but yeah like you say i think there's so much uh opportunity in the xrp ecosystem especially where you start talking to creators they're like well we don't want to put all this 
sort of um, stuff on ETH, at least in the past, because of the green credentials and stuff like that. And yeah. then also thinking about, you know, how long has, <laughs> has a chain gone interrupted, like in Solana's case? Um, you know, there could be questions about that. So, yeah, I think XRP is definitely one of the most more stable ones out there. And yeah. it is under tooled at the moment, but that, I think that presents an opportunity for people like us to come in and fill that space and really build a sort of thriving ecosystem. Yeah, and I think that's what uh, Ripple and the XRP or, or Ripple have done so well with the grants program, right? And mm. for full uh, clarity as well, uh, we received the grant in Wave 2. Um, and yeah, like they mentioned, even David was saying during Apex, right? Like we could have this awesome blockchain, but ultimately it's only as good as the tools that are around it, right? Yeah. So it's like, and I think they're doing like an awesome job of like funding um, people that are actually building uh, around the XRP. And yeah. then back to um, other marketplaces, like on Ethereum and stuff like that. Um, it's good to like look and see what they're doing as well. And like the things that we build or people in the space might build might be fundamentally the same thing, but technically a lot different, right? Because they're just like two different yeah. blockchains. <laughs> so I think it's like, good to see like what other people are doing on other blockchains and and building the the right tools around the xrpl um in the same sense yeah yeah yeah, for sure no i yeah i think we're we're both on the same page there um yeah so any any sort of other thoughts about you know where it, where it goes from here um is there any area you're particularly interested in um you know sort of you expect ticketing to become quite a big thing um or you, you're starting with collectibles i guess a uh, sort of like yeah uh, i mean ones. we ultimately didn't go down the sporting scene route yeah um so we just went into nfts in general um but what you'll see is like a lot of the marketplaces will go into like categories yeah and we've selected our category or where we want to uh head on and go into uh but you'll see like a lot of them might be like gaming or digitals and stuff yeah. like that uh, where we see ours, and it's something that we actually released at, um, at Apex, and which we sort of kept under the rugs for a bit, is um, our video streaming platform that will essentially use NFTs as passes to exclusive videos. And uh, you use a lot of the, um, the XRP ledger to sort of um, fund videos. So we're not going down. Uh, and this is called a video master as well. So okay. this is something we've sort of kept uh, sort of quiet for quite a bit of time. Yeah. Um, but essentially what we're building is we're building a video streaming platform that doesn't use the traditional sense of advertising, which would be sort of, you know, ads or monthly subscriptions. Yeah. And we're using the XRPL to sort of um, push that along, meaning that, you know, people could use something like payment channels and only pay for what they use. And the creator could specify exactly how much they, they earn per video. So it might be, all right, the creator wants to say earn uh, two cents a minute or something like that. And they're able to specify that. And with if you look at other platforms and other streaming platforms, what they're doing is, all right, they'll have like ads, right, which they're taking 45% of the ad revenue. Yeah. And the main part of that is that because there's a massive value inefficiency, right, because they need to then grab the ad or advertisers and then pair them up with the correct people that want to watch the ads. So there's a massive value inefficiency there and they're taking you know, 45% of the ad revenue and creators can't specify how much their content is worth. They can say, yeah, yeah. all right, we want ads in our video or we want more ads, but they can't say, you know, and a lot of the time it's determined by the advertisers, right? Yeah. Like the advertisers will say how much your content is worth per minute, um, which is a completely different route. But like, like I mentioned, we're most likely um, going down that route Obviously, art is a massive one that we uh, have on our marketplace at the moment. So we're still supporting everyone that, you know, yeah. goes down that route. Um, and obviously, we're building a lot of the tools that we build that are used to, you know, power all these other things are going to be within our marketplace as well. So yeah. everyone's able to sort of use the tools um, that we build uh, to sort of, you know, get maybe analytics on their collections or stuff like that. I know that's something like PCAT's doing as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So. I think it's overall it's good for the community. I think it's like good that, you know, there's multiple, you know, platforms, even marketplaces, right? Like it's yeah, probably yeah. good for competitors and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, that's sort of the route that we're uh, planning on going down. Um, so we've already, you know, started with development down that way. No, that sounds cool. 
No, uh, we did a fair bit of work in, with ILP um, a few years ago. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we can chat more after about that. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's an interesting route. Um, but, yeah, I'm just conscious we're probably about 20 minutes. So uh, I think time to wrap up. And uh, yep, I'm out of questions. I don't know if you had anything else. Where, where can people find you? That's always a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, www.nftmaster.com. Uh, that's the marketplace that you could start uh, playing around with on the devnet. Um, so yeah, have go on there, have a look around, and uh, yeah, play around with it. Practice minting some NFTs. Yeah, practice minting <laughs> some NFTs. Yeah, exactly. Oh, awesome. excellent. Um, yeah, really great to chat to you. Thanks for. Uh, I know we uh, went a bit back and forth and finally got time. So uh, yeah, really great to chat. And you guys are doing some really cool stuff. I definitely think there's areas of collaboration maybe we can save each other some work <laughs> yeah, so, yeah exactly yeah we'll, we'll definitely be uh keeping in touch so um yeah thanks for everyone who's still listening um that's all for today and thanks for tuning in uh like subscribe and whatever else you can do on these platforms hit the bell if that's a thing <laughs> um, and yeah tell your friends because that's how it that's how it grows um yeah we'll leave all the links and stuff in the description so definitely check out andrew and nft masters there um and yeah, uh, Andrew, thanks again. And uh, awesome. cheers. Thanks, Greg.